All right, welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, we wanted to talk in this episode about currencies. And there's sometimes a need in a report to select what currency you want to see the report in. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of stuff that has to happen to do that well. You've got conversion rates. And then just in displaying, how do you display the right currency symbol, that type of thing. I think you ran into this recently on uh, some work you've been yeah. doing with the team. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this is those two main pieces you just described. Those are really what we're going to talk about. Um, there's displaying the information so people know what they're looking at. Uh, then there's also the actual conversion piece that you have to handle um, behind the scenes. Okay. So um, since we work in Power BI and, and Azure uh, Stack, Microsoft Stack, let's just attack it from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you deal with the display? How do you show the right currency sign? Yeah. So um, there is something in Power BI when you do your formatting and you set the format of your uh, measure, so let's say you're, you're summing up revenue, um, you can you can just select currency, but then you have to select which currency you want that measure to be in. Um, so that's static. It's, it's once right. you set it, that's set. Right? So so if you put that into a matrix or a table and it was a dollar sign, it's always going to be a dollar sign. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So one thing you could think, if you're familiar with Power BI, is like, okay, well, I could create another measure that's in a different currency, um, and yeah, and then For you the would formatting. have to like, yeah, switch yeah. them out, right? Switch them out based on to a, the okay, currency yeah. that you that you selected, and that'd be like a bookmark or something. Yeah, um, it's not a great way to do it. Um, it'd probably work, but there's a better way. Um, so when you write that measure and you go to select the format that you want, there's an option called dynamic. Um, when you select dynamic, you can set um, a really like a selected value is what the DAX measure is called or the DAX function. Um, and then you have to have in your model the data that is going to drive that format. So um, it would be like a simple string of data inside a table in your data model. Um, and then when you select a currency, let's say uh, like euros, it will then pull Use that whatever format. yeah format you have assigned to euros. Um, this kind of leads into the next topic, which is the conversion, which really happens mostly in the model. So, um, when you're selecting currencies, you want you need people to have a list that they can select from, right? So they need to be able to select euro versus U.S. dollar, um, and that has to happen in the model. So you have to get your data into a good spot to make that happen. Then you can use your dynamic formatting. Okay, so how do you get your data into a good spot to make that happen with the selection? Yeah, so the best way that I found to do this is having this is this is going to be potentially a new topic and maybe a controversial one. But okay, <laughs> there's, there's a uh, what I like to call a concatenated fact table. Okay, so when you think about concatenation, it's bringing two things together, you know, um, or appending them together. Yeah, um, one on top of the other. So. Um, so you would have one currency as your first set of data, right? So it's like say U.S. dollars, and it's all the rows, and it's all in U.S. dollars, and you have one column that's amount. Okay. Right, and then you stick on another set of data. It's duplicate. You're basically duplicating it. Fully duplicated yeah. in a different currency. <laughs> but then do your conversions in that query, and yeah. then it's a different currency. So those two. Um, sets of data are essentially duplicated, but they're separated by a currency symbol. Yeah. Right? Um, so then you then in your report, if you think about it, you have your currency column, you can just use that as a slicer. And then it filters the right set of rows Gets for which currency it is. And it's a complete set of data. So it filters for that. Exactly. So the controversy I'm guessing is that you're doubling, tripling or quadrupling exactly. in number of rows. So mm -hmm. is there a way to mitigate for that? Uh, Short, I mean, short of redoing it a different way, no. I would argue that you should do it this way regardless. Um, one of the things that Power BI and that tabular engine is really good at is compressing data. So let's say you take two of the same record that's only separated by that currency conversion. It treats every column on that record as one. Like, it'll compress it into one value. Um and then the, the currency conversion stays as two. Okay. But the, the uniqueness of your data set is what drives the size up 
um, okay. when you're loading it. So, um, so you're not really doubling the data. Yeah. Technically, the rows are doubling, but yeah. your storage of that data inside your data model does not even get close to doubling. It okay. does increase, but it's not going to double Got by it. any means. All right. That makes sense. So what do you do about conversion rates? Is that just happening inside the data model before the reporting, or do you ever deal with it in the reporting? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's some slick ways you could do it in reporting with DAX and stuff. Um, it would require having like a currency conversion table. But if you're going to go through the trouble of putting that table in there, um, that means you've got the data to know what you need to convert yeah. and what the conversion rate is on some sort of date. So just do um, it. So just put that into your do a view your and, yeah, yeah. and do that conversion there. The best way to do it is to have a conversion rate per day and then the date of the transaction that happens and you use that conversion rate for that time. Yeah. Um, one of the things that can get kind of tricky is if you're looking at like future orders, let's say you've got orders that you haven't fulfilled yet, um, you're going to want to have some rule defined that your business agrees on of what is that conversion rate going forward, what are you gonna right? Use, what are you using yeah. for future conversion rates? And typically it's some sort of average of the last 30 days or something. Yeah, yeah. So when you're doing that uh, concatenated table where you're appending all the these sort of duplicate, but not quite duplicate uh, records, just duplicate, but except for the uh, the numbers in a different currency. Are you doing that all in views or are you somehow, put, okay, so you're yep. not building tables with that. You're no, just on no. the fly building views that do that. Exactly. And then right. you, can, you can actually limit the size of those views depending on how you're gonna be using it in the report. So it really is not that. You're not actually doubling the amount of data storage. Right. Right. You may be do- it, not, not, you're not even doubling anyway because of the compression, but you may be, quote, doubling the amount of data that you're moving across the wire or having to do a query on, but yeah, right. not actually storing more data. Right. Yeah. And in, in fact, the way that we're doing on this current project that I'm working on, um, the, the way that we're doing it is there's only, the, we only need to see U.S. dollars across all businesses, all the international businesses. The international businesses do not need to see everyone else in their local currency. Got it. So we only need to report local currency at each of the international business sites. So um, we don't actually have to duplicate all the U.S. Everything. data, right? Yeah. We're only duplicating like the the Euro data. Um, got it. For one for U.S. dollars and one for Euros. Right? So you got one set of data that's, or one set of rows that's everything in U.S. dollars, and then you have a bunch of smaller sets of rows that are just the local. Exactly. Right. Got it. Right, oh, right. that makes sense. Actually, I don't know how you would do that better. Yeah, it works. I mean, it's it's going to work really well. Is there another, is there any other way to consider there? Or just... You could. Um, like, what you could do is you could add other columns. Like, oh, so you okay. have your amount, just put, and then right. you'd say, like, this um, U.S. dollar amount. And I... then it doesn't make... The UI is nice, though. Then you have to build bookmarks because oh, you're switching columns right. out instead of just filtering rows. It's a big difference. It's like a big difference. Oh, on the visualization side, is much harder. Much harder. Like it, yes, yeah, much harder. It's a slower much probably. Much more to maintain. Yeah, yeah. you got to have different measures. Like, oh, because so your bookmarks. Just, so if you change the report in one bookmark, now you have to change it on all the others. Exactly. Yeah, right. Oh, right. It's a huge pain. Yeah. You then. Yeah. It's just huh. not as slick. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good tip. There you go. Hope that helps somebody. All right. Very good. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Caleb. See ya.